Welcome back to Real Estate is Crazy. I'm David Hagigi. I'm Christina Smith, and this is our guest, Derek Barksdale. Welcome, Derek. Glad to be here. I'm actually looking forward to this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Derek's pretty entertaining, so uh, we, we, we're, uh, we're sweating over here from laughing. <laughs> the, the truth is, he's a local guy here in San Diego, and we like yeah. our locals, so yeah, we've we go. got some good stuff to share. Yeah, yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself real quick and what you do. Sure. Well, I'm local, by the way, of the Bay Area. Uh, oh. I came here oh. back in 1990 when I joined the military and uh, served for 21 years in the United States Navy. Oh, oh so wow. you officially retired. You I did the did whole it. deal. I did. Yeah. Oh, I came man. I enlisted, retired as a naval officer, kind of sold my soul and went to the dark <laughs> side. Well, thank you for your service. I think that yeah. that's a big thing. That's a really big um, life achievement. Oh, yeah. well, you know, it was the proudest moment that I ever had was to serve in the military. And now I get to serve those who serve. So I'm Aww. prouder than proud. I love you, that. You're probably equally frustrated when, when we go out there in the market in the trenches and we see a lot of VA buyers getting a bad uh, rap. It was tough. Yeah. And so fortunately enough, I'm on the leading cusp on that. Uh, not only training our buyers on how to handle those situations, but also realtors as well. So <laughs> the more important question. Yeah. represent <laughs> and those on the listing side have a better understanding yeah. that the VA home loan benefit. I'm all for training. Just, these days, Amen. I think our industry needs a little more. Yeah. <laughs> you know. That's it. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it's a love hate relationship. But, well, I don't want to say love hate. It's like you're either selling to someone who was VA and they really want a VA buyer because they, you know, they, yeah. they can understand it, or, you know, it's someone that just doesn't get it. Yep. And they think that they're going to well, get a Well, but their agent is responsible for helping them get it. So yeah. here's the problem is that a lot of these buyers are being weighed and, um, uh, their Lord value policy. is being determined by yeah. their down payment amount. Mm. And VA buyers tend to have down payment funds. They just don't want to use them. And the way yeah. it's presented to the listing agent is so important, but it's fumbled. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm getting these offers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Mm. You, I, you didn't even call me. Yeah. Like you sent me yeah. an offer for a VA buyer. With the email. Y y and, 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 and like, uh, I could make it work, but they didn't call me to like make it work. So yeah. now when I... Okay, so when I present offers to my sellers, I have a spreadsheet, and the number one column on my spreadsheet is agent communication rating. Hey, oh, you are really? So right, for it's sure. so simple. Yeah. I yeah. can't make a VA buyer number one unless their agent communicates number one. Oh. What? So the VA buyer's agents need to work that much harder. And yeah. that's exactly what I train towards because yeah. they need an advocate. And unfortunately, there is a level of lack of understanding from the industry ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so when I call that agent like yourself, yeah. you know, who may be listing a home, said, hey, my name is Derek Bark. So I'm actually representing a military buyer who's going to be utilizing their VA home loan benefit. Are you familiar with the VA home loan benefit? Oh, well, we have termite damage. It's probably going to be around here. And I said, well, let me let you know about the new VA home loan benefit. And then I go to explain oh my God. how the benefit works. And usually at the end of that call, they're like, oh, I'd love to work with you. And sounds exciting. So the, 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 the termite component of VA is something that not everybody talks about. But sure. it sounds like that person mm -hmm. knew a little bit more or thought they knew more than they actually did and yeah. i think that's the biggest problem with va is that people don't understand real, real estate agents real st listing agents who may be 20 to 40 years in the business yes don't understand that it's a guaranteed loan mm -hmm. so what that means is there are layers of protections to offset maybe a termite clearance mm -hmm. that's required and many times my buyers are willing to pay for the termite clearance it's mm -hmm. not even an extra expense yeah. to the mm -hmm. seller yep well can i just say something can we just uh address the elephant in the room okay. which is the which one the amazing voice that the phone <laughs> voice does that have it. yeah <laughs> no I'm this is radio like, worthy i think we're gonna minute, have to have it back called me, <laughs> <I'd be> like, <laughs> Tell me more about your buyer. <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> fascinated. You, 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 you just disarmed me. Yeah, you know what it is? It is disarming. Yeah. And you know, uh, it, it, so it's well, a compliment. You. It's very calming where I'm like, oh yeah, anything that comes up, like, cause you know, things come up Yes. and, and I think I go from this to like, like some sort of stoned hippie voice when an <laughs> issue comes up and I'm like, <laughs> I go, yeah. Hey man, wait, like chill but you've yeah. learned that that's an effective way to bring your people down uh, emotionally right it's because yeah, you get that, the you get that lower voice which is not like high and escalated and oh my god what are you doing it's you lower it down and you're like hey but relax. it's a nuance <laughs> that you have internalized right mm -hmm. and so what i always preach is the emotional side of real estate it's our job as a buyer's agent especially to manage the energy mm. and emotional flow i love it and not fumble the ball when it comes time to move quickly on something yeah 
It's very hard. It's not yeah. an easy job. And I think right now with Zillow and everybody else trying to say that buyer's agents aren't worth anything, yeah. trying to take away oh, cooperating broker compensation, right? Mm -hmm. The value of a buyer's agent is like through the roof. It There's is. tons of buyers out there in San Diego who need a good agent and they can't find one. No. Well, so let me ask you guys something because part of a good buyer's agent, and we've talked about this, is the... I did a, a reel about it, the reviewing of the disclosures. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> we were just talking about disclosures we today were just because talking we've about all it. had sellers, not that re we represented red flags. who neglected Ooh. to disclose something and got them got their booby in a ringer. Yeah. I over wanna, that. And well, I call I can them explain. shady ass realtors. Shady ass realtors. <laughs> shady ass realtors. <laughs> Let's talk about those shady ass. Well, there's I eighty percent of them are not doing much business. Yeah. So when people think about the how many are there in San Diego? 10,000? It's oh, over no, 27,000. Like 27,000. Yeah. 27, yeah, see, 27, I'm out of touch. <laughs> but the truth is, you know, very few are doing business. And of those few, how many are doing ethical business? Well, how True. many are? I mean, I want to know what's your craziest, shady ass realtors. So that's what <laughs> that's I why you're here. Well, today. one that immediately comes to mind because there's <laughs> many, unfortunately. <laughs> what's um, the top one? It was actually for one of my buyer's agents that works with Military Mutual. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came to me. He's like, hey, uh, is it necessary that a seller and a listing uh, agent disclose that there was a death on property? And yeah. I said, well, yeah, yes, three absolutely. Years, within right? three within year years. time frame." Yeah. He said, okay, well, what if they die in the hospital? I was like, I guess that'd be a little bit different. Well, yeah. here's the situation Still that we disclosure had. disclosure worthy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And initially yeah. in the confidential remarks of the MLS, you should be putting something along there, natural right. death, whatever it may be. Well, well, but that's, that's a courtesy well, to the industry. Yeah, I think that as professionals, we realize that we don't want to drive around and show a house to a buyer who doesn't want to buy a house True. where there's a death or well, something, whatever situation, happens. Yeah. It was a waste of time. It was a waste yeah. of about two weeks. Well, because time, before gas, we got the, energy, you're food. Right. Like, think about all the things that went into that, oh, that, yeah. that listing agent could have Well, prevented. let me explain this whole situation. Yeah, oh, my what God. Happened. What happened here and stuff. Uh, we initially had the buyer went into contract with the seller on the MLS. There was no disclosure of any type of wrongdoing or death on the mm -hmm. property. Uh, come to find out the TDS and the SPQ uh, come through and they roll through and indicate that there was a natural death that had occurred at the hospital. So it posed the question, okay, why would you even put that on there? So then we called, well, um, yeah, well, there was a guy, there was a death that happened, but it was at the hospital. It started at the house, but ended at the hospital. And so we said, okay, well, what was the situation? Well, it was a football coach and he was in his front oh, yard, wow. and unfortunately, he oh, had wow. someone who came and shot him <gasps> in the front yard. Naturally. And, and naturally. Naturally shot him. <laughs> naturally shot him. And uh, he was placed in the oh, ambulance, no. and he was later pronounced dead at the hospital. I said, oh, okay, just, I'm going to make the worst I'm joke right serious. now. Stop. Just li I, This is so bad. Oh, no. But when a shooting is a natural occurrence, <laughs> we need to do something. <laughs> I know. Like if this it is if this agent thought that it was a natural death to be shot, where is their head? I think we all know that the agent knew that it wasn't a natural yeah. death. Yeah. And the agent was just trying to get a commission and trying but they to get know. around. They lie to themselves oh, yeah. so much that they believe they justify their own it. lies. It's not only lying to the self, it's self-justification. Well, yeah. I'll tell you the reason that they put it on the disclosure, because I've had this happen, is because they probably knew eventually yeah, when they the could client get moved in that they were going to talk to the neighbors and the neighbors, because this is what happened to us, the neighbors would be like, oh. <laughs> tell the truth. <laughs> that crazy shooting a year ago. And that happened to me. My clients purchased a home a month after moving in. They had a very heavy rain and there was a massive mudslide into mm. the back of the home. Their, their, yeah, their backyard. Filled their whole pool with mud mm. um, up to the wall of their home. And I went the next day. It, it had gone. It was a horrifying experience. And I start talking to the neighbors and they're like, yeah, it's a shame this happened last year. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, what? Oh, man. And, and thank goodness I had inquired, sure. right? Because anytime you get that little red flag, you inquire. And they had said on our TDS that there had been a heavier rain 
and that a little mud mm-hmm. had gotten in the pool. So they, did, they <laughs> danced around A little bit of mud? It. A little bit of the mud. The whole side of the yard. <laughs> so we did some sleuthing because then we got on the Facebook page. This is where Christina's really powerful had, is on the detective stuff. We downloaded stuff. every video, every photo that had been posted <laughs> on the Facebook community page to prove and there had been seven separate mudslides wow. at that property in oh a 15 year period of time that they did not disclose. So if you think that you're gonna be sneaky at you're just doing yourself such a disservice, what? you're gonna get sued. Okay. We're all brokers here. We are. We're all licensed brokers. I'm not a yes. broker. No? I'm just a realtor. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> are too. Don't worry about it. Listen, so bro- she's a broker at <laughs> heart. It doesn't matter. But the truth is, there's a statute of limitations on this stuff. There is. Yeah. So if a seller fails to disclose something, at least what I've been told by my legal team and the lawyers I trust, mm-hmm. is that there's four years. Oh. You got four years. Okay. And Good yeah. after the fact. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're liable for yes. a lot. I mean... More than, I mean. <laughs> God, did you know you can rescind the sale? Uh, I always, yes, you can. Mm-hmm. I always tell all of my clients, all of our agents that please have the seller over disclose. Do not yeah. be concerned with anything. If anything went wrong, because most people, when they're going to buy a home, they're happy, they're excited about it and so forth. And just disclose it. And if yeah. it's an issue, you could address it. It's not going to yeah. use It's better safe than sorry. I've Absolutely. had my attorneys 100%. draw up. A lot of disclosures. I mean, yeah. we've had a, a, a number of properties that had recurring flooding problems. And, you know, when you're disclosing that kind of thing, you want to make sure you disclose it the way it needs to be disclosed yeah, and sure. not over disclose yeah. actually, right? Yeah, There's a proper yeah. way to do it. Well, you but know, you we're get not always photos, qualified. You get yeah, estimates yeah. for things that could fix the issue. Mm-hmm. You know, you get all the proper reports and sure. then you just hand it over and see if this is and an most issue. Most of the items have pass. been complete. They've been repaired yeah. and they're like, oh, well that was done. Just still mark it down. So well, yeah. we have a we have a problem in this industry where I think many agents don't realize that the paperwork lives with a, a property as a disclosure. So if, if there's a report done like that, that's married to that property. Like yep. if it's in the seller's possession, that's now a disclosure. Absolutely. Ooh. And it's interesting because the dynamic shift when something is uncovered and a seller says, oh, that's not a big deal. They have to actually decide if they think it's going to be a big deal to another buyer. Sure. Yeah. I get, you know, I get all the time people who forget that certain things are in the disclosures. Mm-hmm. Like I've had to remind people like, yeah. don't forget you <laughs> left this yeah. in the in the disclosure. Yeah. And then uh, they think going to because otherwise we would have been in big trouble. Yeah. Be like. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's a decision, you know. Um, a lot of times people are looking at early in, uh, inspections prior to the putting mm-hmm. their home on the sale. That's a double-edged sword because mm-hmm. if you do an inspection, now everything on that inspection report that comes up is now disclosable and yeah. so forth. So um, doesn't mean that you don't do it, but that just needs to be known by your seller that, hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What's the weirdest thing that you've ever um, had on a, a disclosure? Like uh, as part of a home. Well, um, so for the disclosure, it had to have been the natural death that we ultimately re- yeah. researched and come to find out it was a shooting on the front yeah. yard. Highly yeah. unnatural. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Human but, caused. You know, I think it's usually the vague things that come up that make you look a little bit deeper and so forth. Another one, similar to how you had a little dirt in the pool. Yeah. Um, we actually had, uh, there was uh, flooding at the front door. Okay, how do you flood <laughs> a front door is what it is. Well, it's supposed to be kind of the highest yeah. point yeah, of exactly. your property well, in a lot of ways. And what they tried to go towards is because the, the front door was raised going into the home, mm. that's where the water had went to, but mm. it actually went through the entire home, not mm. just the front door. So was there an insurance those, claim? Sneaky. Oh, yeah. I love it when they claim. don't. You can run the, yeah, you don't even realize you can run the well, true report. I, I do. But the sellers, yeah. like they, they don't realize that all needs to be included. Like anytime <laughs> yeah. you do any repairs to your home, especially documented through a flood remediation or insurance company, that's all disclosures. Absolutely. Yeah. All has to be included. Absolutely. You know what else you need to include? Noise issues or weird smells. Yes. Mm. You know, like yeah. I do video walkthroughs. <laughs> I just did one the other day and I walked through and I was like, whoo, because I was walking through this condo complex and this urine smell hit oh. me like a wave. Was it a dog park or it something was like that? because everyone in the complex has dogs uh, and they all pee in a specific area. Let me guess. Do they have turf to pee on? No, it's because, grass. Uh, and it just, the wind came through sure. and I was like, well, this, this whole area smells like dog urine. Yeah. Well, you know, so weird. Smell, smell of vision isn't out yet. So your clients rely on you for that. 
Well, I have something. Speaking of dogs, oh. okay, this was <laughs> I love dogs. It was not a out. disclosure, but it actually made it into a report uh, for a purchase agreement. And uh, we've heard <laughs> yeah. Brian Buffini talked about a dog conveying with the property, and I never thought that I thought it was a joke and that it can never happen. But sure enough, I had a client who actually fell in love with the house, and while she was there, she fell in love with the dog that was <gasps> in the house. And requested that the large dog convey no. wow. with the property and the dishwasher. She wanted the dishwasher, <laughs> dishwasher and the dog. Dishwasher and the dog. Why? Who would take? Well, first I'm like, who would take the dishwasher? But uh-huh. a dog, really? You wrote she that had into this a immediate contractor? attention, or it, one? She felt as if the dog was kind of just left uh, alone, and oh. that the you know the owner wasn't really treating it well. well so that they was didn't good. Care because they said okay. So obviously, did it convey? It, it no, it did not okay, convey. So it didn't oh, convey. Didn't well, convey. okay. Sh- was there. Shameless plug. You know, I'm kind of a divorce specialist. I've been divorced. One thing I found out <laughs> in getting divorced is that animals, pets, sure. are personal property. Absolutely. You can't do custody yes. with them. Yes. What, mm-hmm. When are we going to change this? That's true. That Some is people true. literally consider these their children. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she fell in love with a dog. Did, did you? Did, she, did you buy her a dog as a closing gift? Uh, <laughs> I would have done. Although some of them are expensive. So never mind. Take that off the table. Yeah. Don't yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Take it off the table. I think that's one of those things. You go and pick out the dog yeah, yourself. And, you well, know, you know what? I, I would be a little bad. hesitant to have my buyer add a dog to a contract. Uh, first of all, the emotions involved. If sure. the seller does love the dog, you kind mm-hmm. of muddied it up already. Sure, right. Sure. But also, if you're in any way inferring that the dog is not being taken care of, you've probably oh, offended you've the insulted seller. Them. Yes, yes. And offending and insulting sellers is a real Doesn't thing. Work, yeah. Oh my gosh, it happens like every day. And some yeah. people are just they don't even realize that it's happening. Sure, sure. And they don't realize how counterproductive it is to actually making contracts. Well, you know, well in this situation, I don't think it was disclosed that uh, or in the purchase agreement you aren't taking care of your dog. <laughs> we want it. Uh, and of course, that phone call occurs prior to. Sure. Like, why do you the, want our, the dog? Hey, you know, just letting you know, once again, I have a VA buyer, you know, do you know about the VA home loan benefit? By the way, uh, can we add specific pooch? terms that you'd like to have on there? Well, there is one term. I don't know if this is going to work for you, but my buyer wants your seller's dog. Is that going to fly? And she laughed and she said, you know what? Put it in there. We'll see what they say. You oh know? my Well, I would gosh. do the same. I'd encourage a buyer to write it like that, you yeah. know, because don't, because if, if, if it was a no, or maybe like, oh no, they love that dog. Yeah. Then maybe that buyer would be inhibited from writing that offer. Yeah. Right? Well, you want to remove roadblocks from yeah. buyers writing offers. That's I realize so these things. Well, while we're on the story of dogs. Yeah. Okay. I have two more stories. Of okay. Dogs. I want to hear the dog. One dogs. was going to, this was early in my <laughs> career. I was a little young and, uh, trying to figure things out and i remember going through this home and you know you go through the living room you go through the kitchen you're yeah. just doing the show person you know it, it, highlighting all of the good areas and so forth and then we go to the garage and i said and here's the garage i open it up the lights were really dark in there so i'm kind of feeling around for a light switch and finally i hit the light switch and i look and i'm like wow it's a three-car garage has a lot of space and i hear (laughs) and i'm like "Uh uh-oh and i look down and there's this huge mastiff that's right there at my crotch so Derek Barksdale's a tall man. And this is a tall him. dog. He he looked <laughs> oh, down. My gosh. It, it was the scariest moment that I had, and my voice immediately went hi. I told my clients, "Go, just go, <laughs> get out of the way." <laughs> And you hear my deep voice here. It was not that way. Was now, not in the confidential remarks, was it? No, yeah. no. They well, didn't put a note on the door. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't but, walk in yeah. here, giant. No, what you do is you put a picture of the dog on the door. Exactly. Oh, that's what I've seen sellers do. Yeah, I've yeah. learned since then to always, you know, knock on the door, look yes. in, just as you do at any home that you go through. But the greatest thing you were a little green. That one, you hadn't earned your stripes yet. Oh, at that point. I was green. Yeah, yeah, I did yeah. not know what I didn't need to know or what I didn't know. And so all of a sudden, the dog. I'm. I hear the growl, and then. All of a sudden, it starts licking my hand. I'm like, thank goodness. (laughs) Well, I'm a dog friendly agent, so I tell my sellers, like, hey, you don't need to put your dogs away. I'd rather meet them, right? Like, it's it's kind of better that way. Yeah. But you know, I think depending on the breed, depending on the temperament, a lot of sellers have a lot of fear around this, and the invasion of strangers coming into their home is a big deal. And again, Mm -hmm. agents are tone deaf; they don't hear this. They're like trying to put a lockbox, and I'll put you on showing time, and it'll set up an appointment for you. Like, (laughs) no, these people want to make sure their dogs don't 
become an issue. Yeah. Well, so I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm dating myself a little bit, but not technically because, you know, my mom, who was on the, the podcast, mm-hmm. has been a broker since the 70s. Whoa. So, and she also is a firm believer in She's child a labor. Real estate so, gene. <laughs> <laughs> she young, so huh? when we were- Why do you back, have kids if not for free labor? Well, <laughs> back in the 80s, you know, what realtors did was they delivered giant calendars. Uh-huh. I don't know if you remember. I remember you Oh, remember I still that. have a few. Come so on. So my mom would have- have my sister and I help her deliver these giant calendars. I was probably like five. And I remember that (laughs) for years I was scared of dogs because of this, but the owner opened the door and her little tiny dog just bolted towards me. Mm. And I took off running my little butt across the (laughs) cul-de-sac screaming as this little dog like chased after me. So even even in the 80s and 90s, the dogs hated the agents. The agents were going around with their calendars. The dogs Mm. knew who they were. They Mm. weren't happy with it. You know, they're worse than postal delivery men. Yeah. Sure. You just, but like you said, you never know the temperament of the dog. It was just defending its, its I have a very small, very loud, very um, aggressive sounding dog who's not. Chihuahua. Yeah. Yes, yes, she's got that. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and uh, 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 Jack Chihuahua. Russell is her oh, other. Cool. Oh, yeah. That's why uh, she's barking. Her yeah. name's Moxie. Oh, wow. that's a, that sounds yeah. Lots of like Moxie. Yeah, yeah. She's got Moxie. She came from our wonderful Helen Woodward uh, Center oh, yeah. in Rancho Santa Fe. One of, one of the best go. places to get a pet. Wow. Man, she's a good one. <laughs> well, what's the creepiest thing you've ever seen in a house? Oh, uh, had to have been a dead dog at the bottom of a basement. And when I say what? dead, it was bones and. <gasps> oh, so we're was, talking like decades before. Yeah. So it was oh an abandoned, a, yeah, a previously abandoned home, and it was a client of mine who was looking for an investment property that they could use. This can't have been in San Diego. It had a basement. Oh, it was in San Diego. A basement yeah. in San Diego. I, yeah. see them. They have so, I mean, I have yeah. two, but there's like five. It was yeah. in La Mesa area, if I remember yeah. correctly. Probably so. 40s construction. Something oh yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Way back in the day. Was it a daylight basement? Like half of it was subterranean, but the, the other half was like. Oh, kind it was of just open? brick and. It was dirt and brick underneath. It wow. wasn't even finished or anything. It was like creepy. That. Yeah, it was creepy. Yeah. But we went down there really just to see the storage area. Yeah. And so, you know, I've went into homes and I've had you know squatters run through the home. Um, you know, as I'm opening the door and they run out the uh, back door, they run right past well, you. Well, they you think know? you're oh a cop, God. man. You're yeah. tall yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. well dressed. I was in law enforcement for many years, so oh maybe I gave God. off that for you, you, have, you have a little vibe. Yeah, at least it was a little respect. If he'd have just kicked back you on the couch what? and then rolled over, then I'd be like, okay, I'm not as we gotta intimidated. Get you you got to walk in with like sunglasses. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, like the aviator sure. sunglasses. Well, and just well like... it all starts with the knock. Oh. Okay. Police knocks. Yeah. Always four knocks. Okay. If you listen, it's four knocks. Man, these nuances. This is why we bring you on here. That's what I'm going to do next time. I got to take a note. Four knocks is the police. You know, it's darn interesting because there's a lot of, well, let's just say there's a lot of homeless population around sure. right now. Yeah. There's not yeah. a lot of vacant homes, but it's really yeah. on everybody's radar that yeah. like, you need to secure your properties. Absolutely. I got a lot of flippers putting yeah. in, they basically connect internet and all these cameras because they need yeah. to pr- secure the property. Yeah. And stay away from those little combo master lock uh, oh. ones. They can break into it. You can YouTube it and it shows exactly so how to easy. break yeah. into yeah. it. And the homeless know exactly how to get yeah. into mm-hmm. it. And unfortunately I had a really good friend of mine who had a squatter in his own home. And it was like an act of Congress to try to get these squatters out oh, they, were the they, they became tenants and, uh, yeah. Yes. yeah yeah yes. yeah they were then non-paying tenants yeah yeah non-paying tenants so these intricacies are i love talking about tenant relations so we're gonna have to talk about that more but the sure. truth is getting a tenant out isn't that tough mm. if you treat them like a real person but most landlords make it don't yeah. Yep. yeah it's really accentuated the yeah. problem. I have a property management company as well. And Dude, so what we've company do you it. not have? I love <laughs> well, this. I'm trying to be uh, basically all inclusive for my yeah. clients. Guru. Yeah, that's good. But you know, with that being said, I've only had one eviction ever and it took us about 45 days to evict that person, okay. but they knew every law to get around it. So they were In professional, very common. professional yeah, yeah. tenants. Well, but so, but mm-hmm. choosing your tenant is the key. Yes. So by helping Absolutely. your clients choose good tenants, yep. You have a low eviction. And that's rate. what I said. That never happened again. And that happened to be where uh, one of my clients referred one of their old shipmates who was the one who stayed in the property. We kicked him out, <laughs> kicked her out. Yeah. And come to find out, she was kicked out of the military for doing drugs. I was going to oh, say, wait, did you yeah. call a sergeant? Because that's typically what you do when someone's already not paying. Out. Yeah. Already out. Yep, well, yep. So here's the thing because 
you know, on the listing side of things, it's so important for them to check in on these properties. Sure. And so I just heard a story, thank God I wasn't involved, but it was a client whose friend purchased a home for her parents. She's a real estate agent. And the owner's son broke into the house during escrow and mm. started squatting in the garage. And no one checked on this when they closed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they didn't do a final walkthrough. He's still in the garage. Today. And they're trying to do work <laughs> mm -hmm. to the house. Yep. And they're going to have to go through the whole process. Like It's always harder when it's somebody who's on the inside because it was the seller's son. He, you know. Well, yep. you know, we worry yep. about the Possession seller Possession is nine-tenths of the That's law. right. Yeah. We worry about sellers leaving like their their stuff behind, yeah. but yeah. they left their son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, how much yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it goes back to personal property yeah. versus yeah. custody. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Include him in the sale. <laughs> wow. That, that brings back more divorce stories. I can't tell them right now. I know. And but speaking of divorces, fun. when you're a realtor, you're really a therapist as well. Have you had that oh, call? Yeah. Okay, hey, we're going to put the offer in. <laughs> hey, we've, we've signed the offer. Everything's good to go. Congratulations. Hey, next thing we're going to do is do our inspection. You're going to have the appraisal that comes up, and we're going to make sure your loan contingency is all set. Thank you, Derek. We're so happy for you. And then you get a call about the next morning and they say, hey, uh, Derek, we want to pull our offer. Uh, we're getting a divorce. <gasps> and you're like, what just <laughs> happened How did that overnight? Happen? Yeah, well, my wife doesn't want, want the same color carpet as I want. Oh and you're God. like, are you serious? <laughs> Let me talk to you guys. Hey, you know, I've been married for 30 years now. And, uh, you know, we're always going to yeah. have our Dude, own Dude, you've ways. been married since you were 10? <laughs> I appreciate it. Since I was 21 is what it was. Oh, so, man, yeah. simple math. Now we know and, how old he is. Yeah, 51. But you're that's right. It. You probably negotiate, not negotiate, oh, but you, you yeah. work and you're like, it, I, I've gone through and been like, if you buy this house, you're going to get divorced. Yeah. Oh, the ones in. We need to cancel. You will get divorced. Sometimes my clients that go to Murrieta because it's so beautiful yeah. up there, but they're military, they work. Oh. They, and I'm like, do not do it unless they you're like right time on the road or yeah. something yeah. along those lines. And not distant. I love the Murrieta area, but yeah. that time is the most precious commodity that we you don't have want to spend Earth. it in I your agree. car. You don't want to spend it on a freeway and you away know? from your family Absolutely. and away well, from your spouse. Yeah. I've strengthened yeah. multiple, multiple relationships over the years by teaching the basics of compromise for couples that had been together for a oh, long time yes. and somehow made it that far. Right. Sure. So the, the, exercise that is home buying is actually really strong it's really good relationship yeah. building stuff Absolutely. but it doesn't mean it's going to be easy and it's going to feel like you want to get divorced sometimes uh, <laughs> yeah. no, it's, it, it, it is, is the true. most uncomfortable thing when they argue in front of you and then oh, you yeah. have to play mediator and you're like look yeah mm -hmm. he likes to garden yeah i know you want a patio but we have to find a compromise because you're going to yeah. be here long this time. is where the comedy comes in yeah, i yeah, start yeah. breaking it down i'm like you guys can't do this in front of me <laughs> you know and then, you know or you have to say um i'm here yeah. <laughs> Hello? Well, no, no, I li I, would you like for me to step out for a moment please <laughs> I, I i'm a i'm a fan of the hard conversation i think that the earlier in the process you have the difficult conversation the easier the process is from there yeah. on out sure. so that's kind of my philosophy is when somebody can't i actually take ratings so when we're seeing a home i'll say hey give me a rating one to ten and then i'll ask the spouse one to ten and if they're more than one number apart i usually don't spend more time yeah, on that property yeah, you know yeah. how i know someone's really gonna get divorced i've had this happen <laughs> 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 where like i was calling to follow up with a, a listing appointment yeah right that i had had with a husband and wife and then i get a call from the wife and she goes this happened why are you calling my husband oh. <laughs> who are you and i'm like amber it's Chris crazy Zeta. funny I realtor mom you and your husband uh, <laughs> oh, a week and a half okay, ago yeah, oh yeah. okay i just saw this number coming up on his phone but she was like, probably yeah. getting calls from others I because it's get real. The that wasn't her first oh, rodeo didn't get the listing. Oh. they went with an old ass lady uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then started to ask no me threats. questions yeah no, <laughs> no threats naturally situation. now that's you and know then they did yeah. get divorced like a year and a half later did you get the divorce listing that's what ended up happening wow i was like giving you some tea right now well, they say the three D's, death, divorce, and debt, right? Those yeah. are the three reasons why yes. most of the listings are well, out there. Well, when we talk about divorce, we say that it really is the next hardest thing to losing a child. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? I like, it is, it is turmoil in their lives, and I think real estate agents tend to bring too much sleaze to the table on yeah. divorce listings. Mm. And that's why, if you ask me, there's a bottleneck in the divorce system in our country when it comes yeah. to listing divorce-mandated mm. properties. Mm -hmm. Much 
much discussion to be had there. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can get into that for sure. But, I mean, thank you so much, This Derek, has been fun. Derek, thank you, man. I love appreciate you. Stories. We'll see you. I'm going to have so you back great. soon, I'm sure. Man, yeah. Too many stories to tell. for a little <laughs> bit longer hey, listen, easily. If, if someone wants to buy or sell and they really want to connect with you, how can they get a hold of you? Sure. Um, best way is my phone number, 619-254-1496, or just reach me via email, Derek at militarymutual.org. And we can help with not only buying, selling, property management, but uh, lending as well. Well, and the That's coaching so part, great. I think we talked a little bit about that. As a VA buyer or seller, especially in this climate, mm -hmm. you need extra information, extra coaching, extra okay. hands-on, yeah. extra agent to be your eyes and ears and your absence, all that stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, we're actually doing a VA home, uh, excuse me, a VA Realtor Success Workshop at PSAR off of Genesee on the 21st, which is this I Thursday. I saw that. Oh, that's, yes. that's your event? That's my oh, event. Of course, so this guy's I'll everywhere. Be providing that. <laughs> yeah, so if that. you'd like to learn how you can advocate and serve your client who serves our country, please stop by. It's Absolutely. free and you'll that's learn a so lot. Great. And more importantly, how to learn how to build a referral business out of our military. That's clientele. the most Perfect. important thing. Mm -hmm. We all know that referrals are key. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a way to build a great business. And at the same time, I'd rather have those that get educated serve our clients versus those that are just out for a paycheck. Mm -hmm. I love that. It doesn't work if you're just mm -hmm. out for a paycheck. Oh, yeah. no, it doesn't. It does not. Short term gain, long term loss. Ooh. Over and out. We'll see you next time. Bye. Real estate is crazy. Bye. <laughs>